1776 here, and today we will be reviewing the 2005 film Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story. Now, originally made for DVD, Fox eventually released the film into three separate episodes called Stewie Be Good, Bingo Was His Name-O, and, Stew and Stewie's Excellent Adventure. Now, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of Family Guy. I've only casually watched a couple episodes when I couldn't find anything else that was on on TV. I was just never into the show's sense of comedy. Like, I, I, found, I found the show relying too much on its shock humor and cutaway gags. So, obviously, I was a bit underwhelmed before watching this. But I thought, hey, it couldn't be that bad. And that was where I was dead wrong! I was expecting to have a good time, but when I sat down to watch an hour and a half of this, this, this bullshit, the rest of my evening was absolutely ruined! So basically, this whole movie is like a movie within a movie, with the entire Griffith family showing up at a movie theater just to watch it. Like assholes! Eventually, the actual film starts. About fucking time! Anyways, it starts with the Griffith family hanging out at a public pool. Everyone is at the pool having a good time, except Stu and Peter, like the dumbass that he is, tries pulling Stewie into the pool. However, our Lord and Savior, Louis Griffin, eventually puts an end to Peter's reign of terror and decides to take Stewie to swimming lessons. While at the swimming lessons, Stewie grows jealous of one boy who's a better swimmer than he is and tries to kill him with explosives! Do you see why I have such a problem with this damn movie? Anyways, the explosives end up exploding in Stewie's face. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. And after nearly having a near-death experience, Stewie decides to turn a new leaf. Anyways, there's like this, there's this whole plot filler thing where like, uh, Stewie in, becomes an alcoholic after a short while and crashes Brian's car into the fucking clam. But that doesn't matter because everyone eventually forgets about it. Anyways, while watching TV with Brian Dog, Stewie discovers someone that looks exactly like him. Thinking that it's his actual father, he and Brian hitch a ride with Quagmire the California. Ah, uh, you're uh, that's where liberals come from, and I am also a liberal. Who the fuck are you? I am uh, John F. Kennedy, of course. John F. Kennedy? But aren't you supposed to be dead? No, I am not dead, contrary to popular belief. That's because I, uh, uh, as liberals, dive off the living and ruin the state of our economy. What? Get out of here, you imposter. I'm trying to do a review right now. Well, I, uh, 
Warned ya, kid. See ya. All right. Now, where was I? All right. So while on the ride to California, Stewie and Brian just, just up and leave Quagmire all by himself. How could the show writers do that to our favorite little rapist? <laughs> and the worst part is, this crash is fucking RV in the middle of a desert. Ah! These characters. Ah! Okay. Okay, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. So eventually, they make it to California, and once they get there, they immediately spot Stu. A car chase ensues, and yada yada yada, they finally meet. From that point on, we never see Brian ever again, only in flashbacks. So props to the show writers for making yet another continuity error. Anyways, Stu shows Stewie around it. Apparently this little brat has too much of high standards and doesn't even like how Stewie's living. Like, who cares if he's a virgin? Don't pressure him into sex, you stupid talking baby! So upon realizing that his future self is other shit compared to his present one, Stewie goes back in time to change the past. So he goes back to the swimming pool the day he set off the explosives and prevents his past self from making such a stupid mistake ever again! Then, it just ends. Just like that. The past Dewey shoots the present Dewey and it just like, nothing even ever happened in the past hour and a half! This is why I don't even like a family guy in the first place. It's just, just... Stewie Griffey! That's right, you bum piece of shit. I've heard everything you said about my movie. Uh, so you heard the talking steam ray too? Uh, uh, die! <laughs> Any last words? <coughs> huh? Uh, what the? Whoa. Uh, whoa. Who are you? Don't you mean... Who are we? <gasps> Super Dead Six Galaxy? What are you doing here? Well, Marco Sonic, I'm not only here just to save you, but I'm also here to remind you of something. Oh, and what would that be? Stewie Griffin The Untold Story isn't 100% awful. There are a lot of things to enjoy about the movie, or should I say, a three-parter, because... They're all three episodes into one. Anyways, on to the pros. The voice acting is grand. The writing is fantastic. The characters are well-developed and relatable. The cutaway gags, while generic and repetitive nowadays, are freaking hilarious, even for season four standards. We get Stewie Griffin as the main character instead of Peter, which is a nice change of pace. The scenes are really memorable, like Peter's You Know What Really Grinds My Gears segment, and in all three episodes, they have really funny moments and clever jokes. Yeah, I'm not joking. The Grind My Gears segment is a really amazing subplot for Peter. Brian and Stewie make a great duo together since the Road 2 series as they go on a quest to find the guy identical to Stewie. And we actually get to see what Quahog looks like in the future timeline where everyone is all grown up and Peter and Lois end up in a retirement home. While the episodes in my opinion are the best in the series, I still think PTV is still superior. My issue with this movie is not from the episodes, I think the episodes themselves are fantastically well written. It's the DVD itself. First off, the advertisements emphasize the quote-unquote uncensored elements. If you watch the DVD out of the box by hitting 
play movie, it isn't uncensored. There are a few swear words which have been bleeped out, but for those of you expecting something too hot for TV, you'll be on the disappointed side. So that comes off as false advertising if you ask me. However, you can turn off the censoring bleeps on the DVD, but it isn't the default option. The second problem would be the extra features. They're a bit lacking. I mean, there is a good audio commentary from Seth MacFarlane and Alex Borstein and some animation tests, but overall, the extras weren't anything special. But everything else more than makes up for it, and this will change your mind. And all of this is coming from season four, the best season of the show. Do I recommend watching this? Yes, of course. So, do I think Family Guy is the worst thing to exist in adult animation and in cartoon history? No, give that title to Velma for changing Scooby-Doo for the worse, and most importantly, for making my new hated protagonist in all of existence. Well, I guess I never thought of it like that. Thanks, Dad. No problem, Marco. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got some numbers to crunch up. Bye, Super Dead Six Galaxy! Huh. Well, folks, as you heard it from Dead, I guess I was being a little too hard on this movie. Sure, it's a bit tedious with its runtime and the pop culture references and cutaway gags do get old, but it still has that Family Guy charm that we all miss from the modern syndication. It may not be perfect, but hey, who said it had to be? <laughs> my name is Marco Song, 1776, and this was my review of the 2005 film, Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story. Goodbye, y'all.